1943, Italy. The Allies had won a toehold on Europe. After bloody Salerno, prime objective was Foggia, an array of Nazi Italian airfields strategically close to the heart of Germany. Early the next year, General Spatz came to Foggia to inspect us. Nate Twining's new outfit, the 15th Air Force. General Aker was taking over command of the Mediterranean Theater. The brass met to plan air support, the keystone for Allied armies on the road to Rome. Winter rains made sunny Italy a sea of mud. Taking 61 days to travel eight miles, the 5th Army inched its way up the boot. Their order was push north through the German lines and liberate Rome. Every day at 0600, the 12th Air Force reported for tactical missions. Fighting the same winter weather, we were handed the grim job of blasting a hole through the Gustav line. We fighter pilots were the sword point of the new Mediterranean Allied Air Forces. Forged in Africa, tempered in Pantelleria, and blooded in Sicily, the 12th was now put to the big test. Italy, no soft underbelly, was defended by at least 24 tough German divisions. We had 11. To balance the opposing forces, we mounted daily strikes to protect our tanks, to clear a path for our infantry. Although weather, terrain, and Nazis had finally stopped our armies, they never stopped us. There was no mud in the sky. highway trod by Caesar's triumphant legions of old. It was our job to open the rugged road to Rome. Blocking the way were minefields, occupied villages, protected by Nazi airdromes and Nazi tanks. and roads that had to be cut before our own troops, stymied on the narrow mountainous peninsula, could move. Even army mules had difficulty climbing Italy's rocky backbone. Allied forces, which now included some Italians, measured our advances in mountaintops instead of miles. San Pietro, like dozens of other German-held towns, was caught in a tight net of artillery fire. At times, our men felt they were on the long end of a forgotten front. But in spite of terrain, weather, and dug-in Nazis, the 5th Army kept up the pressure. From village to village, from mountain to mountain, it was the same bitter action. Attacks and advances. They approached Casino, gateway to Rome. This was one of those bitter moments born by war. High atop Monastery Hill in the Abbey of Monte Cassino, 
the godless Nazis had installed an observation post and from there followed the movements of Allied soldiers below. Relying on the reluctance of the Allies to damage the Abbey, the Germans dominated the Leary Valley. From the sacred citadel itself, they tried to destroy the forces of freedom by directing concentrations of accurate and murderous fire. American 5th Army artillery hammered back. Stalemated by the enemy's unique position, the road to Rome was blocked. After weeks of investigation, including personal reconnaissance over Monte Cassino by Generals Aker and Devers, the Allies decided we would bomb and shell the Nazi-held town and abbey. For tactical reasons, Aker was opposed to the bombing. Instead, he favored using air to strangle enemy supply. But Allied leaders felt the continued sacrifice of our own men must stop. Everything else having failed, the Allies ordered air power to neutralize the Nazi observation post. Worried Germans heard the first wave drone overhead. Like rabbits, the enemy darted into surrounding caves and tunnels carved into solid rock. Long prepared, their Gustav line pivoted on fortified casino, the town as well as the abbey, which the Germans had made a military target. the enemy survived the bombing. Fanatic, they still had the will to fight. Up from their tunnels, their bunkers, up into the ruins, their tough paratroopers quickly regrouped. In minutes, they re-established their strong points. The Germans were back in business. as well as Nazis blocked the way. Air leaders finally convinced everyone that the only way we could crack the Gustav line was to choke off the enemy's flow of supplies south of Rome. The operation was aptly named Strangle. In March, those of us flying for the 12th and 15th Air Forces began to deliver a series of flows against rail yards, tracks, trains, and bridges, especially bridges. In Italy, there were more than 40,000 bridges. from the start. We hunted enemy trains and cut their lines in more than a hundred places.
unlimited trucks and ships. a new air and ground drive, a big one. We had the enemy on the run. Three days later, our 5th Army cracked the Gustav line. It had taken seven weeks to cut his main arteries and let enemy supply bleed to death. Mobility, the heart of German ground strength, was stymied. All his bridges were falling down. In the words of General Mark Clark, with the splendid effort of our Air Force, we put the enemy on the road. Allied forces had triumphed at a price. Part of it, 9,000 airmen. But the road to Rome was open at last. There were cheers from grateful Romans for the weary men who had exploded through the tight enemy ring at Anzio's bloody beachhead. Now, after nine months of brutal war, half of once Nazi-dominated Italy was free, and the Eternal City opened its arms. Out of Casino and Operation Strangle came new lessons in the application of air power. In the forthcoming prelude to the Normandy invasion, you will see these hard-won lessons and tactics sharpened by the now campaign-wise United States Air Force.